We now know that in the three and a half months after Jacob's abduction, Danny Heinrich was interviewed and contacted by Stearns County investigators and the FBI four times. During that time, the FBI determined that Heinrich's shoe prints and his car's tire tracks were consistent, but not a scientific match to the prints and tracks found at the Wetterling abduction scene. Jared Sherrill's attack was preceded by assaults on eight boys in Painesville in 1986 and 1987. Those cases were never solved, but investigators believe they are connected to Heinrich. Nina Morney talked with one of those victims today, and she joins us now from our newsroom. Nina. Hi, Angela. Troy Cole of Painesville came forward with help from Jared Shiro within the last year or so. He told us today he's glad the Wetterlings have finally found Jacob. But he says he's outraged about how his and other cases in Painesville were handled. He thinks Jacob's abduction could have been prevented if only the Painesville cases had been thoroughly investigated right when they happened. It's something that you can only put in the back of your head. You can never get rid of it. Troy Cole was attacked and sexually assaulted a block or so from his own front door three years before Jacob was taken. Riding my bike home one night, and next thing you know, you got a knife to your throat, not knowing if you're going to live or die when you're 13. It's kind of scary. Cole says he and seven other boys who reported attacks in the late 80s weren't taken seriously by Painesville authorities. I gave a statement to city police here that night that happened, and I never heard anything back from anybody. In a document made public last year, it was revealed that Painesville's then police chief, Robert Schmaginski, contacted the Wetterling investigators in January of 1990 about the Painesville cases. He told them Danny Heinrich, who lived in Painesville at the time, was a suspect. In 2014, WCCO asked Patty Wetterling if she had known about the Painesville cases. She said, we did not know. I think the world of them, because they're how they kept it together for this many years, not knowing what happened to their kid. With all of the eight Painesville attacks happening before Jacob was taken, Cole believes Jacob could still be alive today, but he is relieved he has been found. After sources say 53-year-old Danny Heinrich led the FBI to the boy's remains. I was shocked that he actually did talk and finally came forward and let the Wetterlings have closure. Relieved for the Wetterling family, but Cole is still left with anger and sadness over what he believes could have been. There's only one unanswered question now that I want to know is why didn't they do anything about it? Another victim from Painesville, WCCO has identified as Craig, told us this weekend that he also believes if authorities had done more to find his attacker, Jacob would be alive today. WCCO has made several attempts over the last two years, including tonight, to talk with the former Painesville police chief about how these victims feel. He has declined to comment, posting signs on his door tonight asking people not to ring his doorbell, and someone who answered the phone at his residence tonight asked us not to call back, Angela. All right, thank you, Nina.